Good morning. Hello, we are here, live and direct from Fluff Towers. Aren't we, Bowie? Bowie sounds a little bit like Darth Vader this morning. Not quite sure why. Um, you can stop doing your <laughs> breathing and look how gentle she is. Oh, oh crikey. Uh, take your blankie. Hello, everyone. We are back after a little bit of a hiatus because Christopher was off uh, doing proper work, amazingly. Working for the man. Uh, at the Brit Awards. How was the Brit Awards, Chris? Uh, fantastic. Very, very, very nice to be back doing proper jobs and that. Good. Did you meet anyone famous? No. Oh, I think you did, didn't you? Uh, no, no, no. Are you not allowed to say? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Confidentiality. Oh, okay. Okay. I think he did. No. I can't even think he was there now. Coldplay. Dewar. <laughs> Dewar. Did you meet Dewar? No. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to know about that. Right, have we got some people? Uh, there are some people. Yes. Are people yes. coming? Can 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 people just message in and make sure they can yeah. tell us they can got see Got people on Facebook, got everything. people on Insta, got people on what's the other one? YouTube. Yeah, I reckon. Like and subscribe, like and subscribe. I, I must say that again, I always forget. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe, apparently. You know it makes sense. Right, welcome to Drop Spindle Spinning. Right, so this is me showing you how to spin your own yarn using a drop spindle instead of a great big fat um, spinning wheel. It feels brighter here today. Is it brighter? Or we always no, have this many lights. Okay. This many lights all the time. <laughs> okay. Nothing's so, changed. Okay, fine. So you can spin yarn using wool tops, which is what I've got here, using this very simple piece of apparatus, a drop spindle. Okay. Now, I do outline how to do this in my book, Easy Stuff to Make with Fluff, if you've already got a copy of that. There is a step-by-step -step in there. But it's always much easier to see someone actually doing it, isn't it, I find, personally. And I remember when I was trying to learn how to do this, actually, when, uh, ages ago, um, YouTube wasn't quite so much of a thing then, but there were a few videos on there of how to do it. Um, but they were all at a very much at a distance and you couldn't really see what was going on. So, I mean, hopefully we'll try and show you a, li a few little closey uppy bits of how to do this today to make it slightly easier if you've never done it before. If you've never done it before and you watch some videos on YouTube, you see people just with this spinning around and they're just drafting the wool and it's all just happening like magic. Quite tricky, okay? Especially if you've never done it before. So what I'm going to show you today is how to do what we call the park and draft method. Ooh, okay. is that like park and drive? No. No. Drive, park, park and What is park bus. and drive? Is park, that when you park? Park, park and that's when you park. That's when you get in a car, you park in a car park and then you get on a bus and yep. go shopping. No, yep. we're not it's going not like shopping that. and we're no. not getting on a bus. Okay. Apart from that, it's very similar. <laughs> park and, park and. Well, I can't remember now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this, this is a drop spindle. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes and prices. We only sell one. We kind of sell you all round a starter, well-priced drop spindle, okay? This part is called the whirl. This part, funnily enough, is called the hook. <laughs> no way. And this is called the shaft. I thought he was going to do a sound effect then. I was kind of waiting for that. We've had conversations about this. Right, okay, so the whirl can sometimes be at the top or at the bottom. I have only ever used drop spindles where it's at the top. Okay, the size and the weight of this um, can affect the yarn that you spin, okay? So if you wanted to spin lace weight yarn, who does that? 
uh, <laughs> on a drop spindle. Maybe you do. Uh, you might need a smaller, more lightweight drop spindle. Okay. You may find that when you get a lot of, here's another one, look, that's actually a handmade drop spindle that I've had for many years. That's, uh, it's made from beach and something, mahogany and beach. And it tells me it weighs 45 grams. So <clears throat> if you're really into this, they come in all different shapes and sizes, like I said. So the one that we sell at the moment on our website looks like this. It's also the one that comes in our kits. I'll talk more about those at the end. And as you can see, it's got the hook at the top. It's got the whirl. It has got a little nick in the whirl here, which is quite handy. Although sometimes, as you can see here, I don't even use it. But basically, it's just to put your, your yarn in uh, before you put it around the hook. It's just like a little groove. A groove is a better word, not a nick. So that's your whirl. It's all very straightforward and simple. There's not an awful lot to it as a piece of kind of equipment or apparatus. Um, and, and then it's just designed to spin around. It's almost like a weighted thing, which uh, helps it sort of spin evenly. And you may find that when this builds up with a lot of yarn on it of, that you're spinning, that it starts to go a bit more wonky as you spin it and it's not quite so... Um, what's the word? Even? Yeah, let's use that word. It's not quite <laughs> so even and it sort of swings around a bit more. Okay. Can, now, I, can I just stop you there for yeah, a moment? Go on, please yeah, please do. Just, just yes. to do this. I'm intrigued. Gem tack for all your sticky needs. We're not using gem tack. I know, but there was a request from one of the viewers. Oh. What can I say? Oh, You've okay. got to please the viewers. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I was watching one back the other day when you had a gong sound effect. Yeah, I've got I was that. That's that. Oh, no, one. no, we don't. Oh, okay. Do you know what, actually? We just bought two big dustbins, galvanised metal dustbins to, to sort of uh, display all our fabric in. I know that sounds a bit weird, but it looks quite nice. So I've got these two dustbin lids that I don't need, so I was sort of thinking, what could we do with them? Maybe we could do a, a gong thing with them. Not this week, though. We'll work on oh. that little performance. Right, what was I going to say? Right, so the yarn that I spin using these drop spindles, I like to spin what I call roving yarn, roving style yarn, which is unplied. For those of you not in the know, a lot of yarn that you buy will be plied. So it'll be two or three, or when you call four ply, you've heard four ply, double knit is eight ply. So it's like the number of sort of, bits of it that are sort of twisted and spun together to make the yarn so a lot of people will spin a two-ply yarn so they'll have one lot of this and another lot of this and then they'll ply them together to make a plied yarn I don't like I don't particularly do that because I like the look of the roving yarn and the roving yarn is similar to this, which is the Malabrigio that we sell, which is hand dyed and is just a roving yarn, slightly, very, very slightly felted. Um, and our hand dyed holy fluff, this is Birdhouse in Your Soul. Again, a roving yarn, not plied. That's what I like to do. I will briefly outline at the end how you would ply um, two pieces of yarn together to ply it if you want to. All right, so let's start at the very beginning, okay? What you're going to need, obviously, is the drop spindle, but also some wool tops, tops in the color of your choosing. Now, uh, I'm using some of our house blend Angel's Delight, this is called, today. On the table, I've also got Phantasmagorical, which works really well, and another fave, Glittery Unicorn, and there's lots of others I'll show you at the end. And when you get this, it tends to come in long lengths like this, okay? Really, for this park and draft method, what you want to do is have pieces that are about 30 to 50 centimetres long-ish. So they're kind of manageable. You don't want it too long. That's, that's just over a metre. So probably about half that, okay? If you ever want to pull the wool apart, just hold your hands apart from one another and it comes apart quite easily. And then what you want to do is split it up lengthways. So I tend to, you can either split it up into three, okay? Let's do that to start with, okay? Because that's how I tend to teach people. Split it up into three to start with, okay? And then if you take one of those lengths, you can either use it as it is if you think you're gonna spin quite a thick, you want quite a thick, chunky yarn, or you can, you can actually split that up again 
if you then want to do more of a kind of double knit Aran type weight yarn. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work with today. So that's how to prepare the pieces of the wool tops to start with. Then you want to do what's called drafting, pre-drafting. Okay, and that's just elongating it out very slightly before you start now this is brand new wool tops Ooh. straight out the bag I know sound effect brand new out Ding. the bag uh, oh I don't know what have you got quick the, no 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 that's a sad sound effect oh sorry you need a kind of like um symbol no anyway we'll work on that as well shall we oh this one yes no. exactly something like that uh, so you would just elongate it slightly now when I do do this I always just you, it's very difficult to describe and show. You need to do it. But basically, you're just going ee, just a little ee. You're not going ee. You're just going ee. Because if you pull it too much, it will break very, very easily. Now, if, the, if your wool isn't new and it's been hanging about for a while, maybe you bought it from us a while ago and it's just been sitting on the side out of its bag. No way. Then it may have hardened slightly and it may be more difficult to pull apart for whatever you're using it for, even if you're using it for felting, slightly more difficult to pull apart. And then you might have to give it more of a ee rather than an ee. So if it's brand new, just be very, very gentle with pulling it because you don't want to end up with lots of small pieces because they're useless. All right, so that's the first thing. Next thing, how to start. Okay, now there's a few ways of starting. You can just use any old piece of, of yarn and just tie it round here and bring it up and then I'll, I'll show you how to attach pieces of yarn together, uh, pieces of the fluff to yarn, okay? But another really, really easy way is just to get any old yarn, and let's just go to the overhead head here, darling, please, so that I can just show everybody what I mean. This is just a piece of, actually this is Makita, uh, like a four-ply yarn. And what I've done is I've just cut a bit off, I've tied it here, and then what you do is just loop it over your drop spindle like so, okay? And then when I bring it up to my hook at the top here, I've now got a loop. Let's just hook that round a couple of times. Okay, so in my loop there, I can now stick my, to be spun, wool tops through the loop like this okay and I would still give it a bit of a twist and a twiddle but now I'm going to hold on to my loop and onto the uh, the wool tops in there and then if you come back to me Chris please I'm then just going to give it a twirl give us a twirl okay that's what the, the, our kits are called give it a twirl and then you can see how that's immediately I'll now come back to the overhead please Chris that's immediately spun it together here, okay? All right, now, if you don't do it like that, I'll show you how to uh, attach the pieces together, but it's a very, very easy way of doing it, okay? Now, the next thing you're gonna want to do is draft some of that yarn and pull some of that yarn out, okay? And then always pinch with your finger and thumb and hold it, okay, a few inches above there, okay? And then I'm just going to now hold it up again, if you cut to me, and then, twist again now when i'm twisting this i personally for some unknown reason always twist anti-clockwise it doesn't matter which way you twist i think a lot of people do it the other way actually i feel like i've got hair in my eye um, a lot of people twist it the other way and go clockwise so like i say it doesn't matter which as long as you're consistent because what, you don't what, what do you need to be consistent good work it's quite a good word isn't it um because if you forget which way you were doing it, obviously, and then you twist it the other way, the whole thing is going to come apart and fall apart. So always do it the same way. I always twist it anti-clockwise. The other reason for being consistent with this is if you did want to ply two yarns together at the end and make a two-ply yarn or even a three-ply yarn, you then need to twist it the other way, okay? So you need to remember which way is your, your starter twist, okay? Some people like to roll this off the their thigh. I mean, it all gets quite sort of. Uh, um, how would you leave it? it? <laughs> earthy, quite earthy. earthy. Let's earthy. use that word. I just twist it. I like to hold it in the air like this, and I'm just going to show you this. I don't think I have to shave my armpits. Let's keep over there. <laughs> you don't want to get an eyeful of that. 
Um, so I'm just going to show you how I do it. So if you want to sit at a table and do it, you can, but also obviously you can sit on the sofa and do it while you're watching the telly or whatever you're doing. Um, but you kind of need enough sort of dangle space for this to dangle, for your shaft to dangle, okay? And what I want to emphasize here is where I've got the wool tops, all right? So I've got them hanging over my arm so my, they're actually at the back of my arm here. I think I think you're going to have to move in a little oh, bit yeah, for our viewers Insta. on on Instagram. There we go. So I, is that better? I don't know. So I've got them hanging over my arm here, so that they're not in the way of the spindle. If you just have it hanging like this and you twist it round, what can happen is that, and then it all gets bum, in bum, a bum. horrible, horrible mess. Okay. Like that sound effect. It's very annoying. So always get into the habit that you've got to kind of keep your elbow in the air in, a little bit, unless you find another way, or you might want to just have it over your shoulder. Um, but always get into the habit. I'm wearing something today that just loves to stick to wool tops. I'm going to look like a hairy mammoth at the end of this. Um, always, always get into the habit of keeping it over your elbow like that, and then it keeps it out of the way all right so I'm just going to show you now front on how I do this and then we'll go in slow motion and I will show you using our overhead camera how I'm drafting and letting the spinning the energy from the spin travel through into the new wool tops okay so we're spinning to start with like this and I'm going to talk to you about over spinning in a second as well and then to start with you're just going to need to hold this and just wrap it round a little bit, actually. Let's just go up here a bit more. There we go, okay. Then what I do is park, like, okay, park the car. I park it under my right armpit. Now, if you're, the other, if you're right hand, left handed, you might wanna do it the other way around, or some people like to park it, if they're not sitting at a table, if you're just sitting on the sofa, you can park it bet between your knees is another way of doing it, okay. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to draft out some more wool tops. Now, the amount you draft this out by will determine how thick your yarn is. So let's just keep it quite thick for now, which will, which is what I recommend if you're starting out, because that will prevent it from breaking to a certain extent. The thinner you go, sorry, I really have got some wool in my eye. Oh, there we go, got it. Um, the thinner you go, the more likely it is to, to, to snap and break and cause you problems, okay? So let's keep it a little bit thicker. So um, then I'm going to let that spin travel up into that and they're going to give it another spin, okay? Just what I tend to do is I, ah, you see there? See what's oh. happened? Yeah. So what I tend to do is spin it until it's just about to go back the other way, all right? And then park it under my armpit all right then I'm just going to draft out a little bit more yarn pinch it with my finger and thumb because you've got to stop the spin as well you're controlling the area in which it's spinning for now with this method this park and draft and then I let go and you see immediately that's that that energy from the spin traveled up into that new bit of yarn so I'm now just going to give that another little spin like that because it's right at the beginning of this and then I'm going to wind this onto my spindle. It's a bit ropey at the beginning there, but now it's going to get more even. So park, draft. I, I honestly feel like this is sticking to my uh, jumpsuit. Weird. Weird. Never mind. Uh, spinning it again. Okay. And then unhooking it, winding it on. Okay. Spinning it again. And, and this spin here, I'm now holding with my finger and thumb so it doesn't travel any further. Then I'm drafting the next bit that I want it to go into, okay? Pinching it, probably about six inches up, I suppose, okay? And then letting that spin go up and then spinning it a little bit more. Should we, should we go? Wait, right, so now I'm gonna go to the overhead. Yeah. Hang on, hold your horses. There, there are some questions. There will be, I expect, yes. Yeah. Let me just do All this right, and okay. then I'll answer them. Right, so okay. now go to the overhead, please. All right, so I'm holding it here. I'm going to decide the point at which I'm going to let it, the, the, the energy from the spin travel to, which I think we'll do here, okay? Then you'll see, as I let go, 
the spin travels, the energy that's, that it's in the spin travels up to my next pinch point. And it's important that you don't let that, that energy carry on because it'll be impossible to draft that new bit of wool if, if it's got a slight spin in it. It's, it'll be like using a very old wool, okay? And so then you carry on. I've got another one that I was using with another bit of this here, okay? I feel like I'm actually now completely covered in, in hair and look a bit hairy. Go on then, what were the questions? Let's do a couple so, of questions. Um, Patricia on Facebook says, is it important to use longer or shorter pieces? I assume she's talking about the wool top that you have um, drafted, drafted, yes, and got or, ready. Or, okay, yeah. so like I said at the beginning, you want to use a piece that's about... 30 to 50 centimetres long for this, just to keep it manageable. Once you've mastered this, you can move on. You can use longer pieces. You can use bats instead of wool tops. This is wool tops wound into a continuous length, very similar to roving, if you're watching in, in America, okay? So anything that's wool tops or roving is what I'm describing uh, how, to, how to use. You, a bat is, um, that's bat B-A-double-T, not bat as in a flying bat that perhaps caused coronavirus. Ba a bat is something that you make with lots of, um, on a carding machine, and you end up with like a sort of a big rectangle of fluff, essentially, that you can then wind into a ball of more like wool tops, or you can just use a corner of it, and a lot of spinners will use a bat to spin from rather than wool tops or roving. But certainly with wool tops and roving, I would, I would advise using no more than about 50 centimetres in length to start with if you're starting as a newbie, just to make your life easier. Because it's one of those things where you watch someone do it and you think, oh, and you have a go and you think, oh, and I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you to get going. Because you'll sometimes, you, you, you will find people on YouTube who just are continuously drafting and spinning without stopping and they're not parking, okay? Ooh. And that's what you can work up to when you're really clever, if, okay. you, if you get to that point, okay? So, um, other questions? Yeah. Christian in Austria. Oh, hello, from Austria. What kind of wool mic do you use? I what think, kind of I what, think sorry? there might be some sarcasm about my audio quali quality, but I might be wrong. What sort of wool mic? M I C, oh. mic. Oh, I oh, don't well. know about that. Anyway. Sorry. Um, I think he. he <laughs> You've he been funny. Might be taking a wool the mic. Or taking maybe the it's Mickey a Mickey Christian. Or maybe it's a typo. Maybe. Anyway, anyway let's move on. A uh, proper question about spinning. Can you show how to attach the yarn again, please? I, I will do that, absolutely, yeah. Okay. So um, I, I'm, what I want to do is I want to just go through this drafting bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to force a break Ooh. where this happens all the time, where you go too thin and it breaks and I'm going to show you how to join it back together again. Just, just, right. just before you do that, Elizabeth Humphreys on Facebook, she says, uh, the little bit I've managed to do curls back up on itself. Yes. Am I over spinning? Yes, okay, so that's something I wanted to talk about. So when you spin it here, if I carry on doing it and I carry on doing it and I carry on doing it, Eventually, this is going to happen. Let's just put that under the overhead so everyone can see that. That's going to happen if you overspin it and you're going to get all these funny little ringlets, okay? So um, I, I would just recommend just undoing, like letting that unspin to the point at which it looks spun but hasn't coiled up. So yes, you're just overspinning it. So just give it enough just before it wants to go back in the other direction, okay? And you know you've got that energy now in this bit waiting to travel up. Now draft out and let it travel up. Draft out and let it travel up. And then you'll get to the point where you think, actually now it, no, it needs another spin, all right? And then when you've got a length, I suppose, maybe more than sort of a foot long like that, you would then go to wind it on. Now, when you're winding it on, you want to keep your winding, if you can, mostly to the top of the whirl, top of the, the shaft, 
because it will it'll make this spin more easily rather than you having it all the way down here. But of course you can, you can keep going. Um, if you're spinning quite a lot, you can keep going until the whole thing is covered and full. But obviously you don't want it to get any fuller than to that point there. Um, otherwise it will, it will come off. And so I like to sort of roll it, um, wind it off when it gets quite full and start again. And then people often say to me, well, how much, how much yarn will I be able to spin from one of your 100 gram uh, packs of wool tops? I say, you'll be able to spin 100 grams of yarn, madam, because 100 grams is 100 grams. The only difference is the length of the yarn that you're going to spin. And the, of course, that's determined by how thin you spin it, how narrow it is, whether you're spinning, you know, the equivalent of a four ply yarn or whether you're spinning a nice big, super chunky yarn like this, that will determine how much meterage you get from this but it's always going to be 100 grams if you use 100 grams to start with so if you know that you want i don't know to make um say a hat all right so you're probably only going to need 100 grams of yarn to make a hat with a super chunky okay but if you're spinning 100 grams of yarn into a four ply then you'll probably be able to make uh three hats maybe two two three two or three hats so yeah it's all relative, as they say. So, so Elaine is trying to play along. Okay, all right. And she's saying she wants to know how. Can you show her again how you started? How you yeah, joined? Yeah, all right. So at let's start beginning. it again. All right. I might just put this one down and and start again on my other one. Let me just. So when I put it down, just so you know, what I do is I wrap it a few times around the hook, and then I just wrap the piece of wool tops that I was using around the shaft. Okay. All right, so let me bring back the one that I was using uh, to start it off with. And let's go back over how to start. So what I did, and what I think is the easiest way of doing this, is to get a, a piece of yarn, any old yarn will do. Let's actually just break that off. Um, loop it round and tie it into a knot. Okay, let's go to the overhead again, please, Chris. So it's like that. Okay, Instagrammers, it's like that. Okay, and then we're just going to bring that through. Okay, like this. Slide it up to the top of the spindle of the uh, the spindle shaft. Shaft, sorry. And then bring this bit around the hook a couple of times, like that. Okay, and then you're going to put the end of your first piece. Where is it? What was I using? Well, let's go with this. So you're just going to bring that through the loop uh, right at the beginning there. And this is the easiest way of starting off, okay? Uh, but I would also just keep the, the two together, just give them a little twiddle. And then I often just lick my fingers and just twiddle it a bit Ew. like that. I know, I knew you were gonna say that. And then obviously when you twist this round and round and round, I'll do it on the table rather than holding it up. Hang on, round and round and round like this. There we go. It's kind of twisted together. And that's how you're going to start. Now come back to me, Chris. So we're twisting it like that. And then, sorry, this has already been spun. So I sort of need to unspin it to show you again. So then we're drafting it out again. We're letting that travel down like that. Get a good old spin, spin going right at the beginning. Make sure you even slightly overspin it right at the beginning, just so it doesn't fall apart when you first start, okay? spinning round just before it goes back the other way stop pop it under your armpit drafting it out pinch you're always pinching you're always working between your two thumbs so I've now pinched further and I can see it's not really working now needs some more spin in it but actually it's getting a bit long because I don't want to spin that bottom bit again so I'm going to wind that on to the spindle okay and you need to leave, leave enough length where it's not spun properly sorry this is a bit of a mess because I've already spun this bit um, but that's how you start it off all right so what I want to do now is I want to show you what happens when it breaks okay so um, maybe you are doing a finer yarn or maybe you're just starting out and it's all gone a bit horribly wrong Believe me, it has happened to me many, many times. All right, many. so let's see if I can make it happen again now. <laughs> I probably can't now. What, what tends to happen is that you draft this out. Here we go. You draft it out too thin. Okay, oh, it hasn't, oh, no, it's not gonna break now. 
Let me see if I can go even thinner. So make it go even thinner, I think. So I, I feel like that's really too thin now and it's gonna, oh no. <laughs> Give it to me, just, I'll break it. Yeah, okay, I might just actually pull it apart just in that case, just to show you. All right, so, so say you're drafting it out and you go, oh, oh for goodness no. sake, oh, no. it's broken, all right. Perfect sound effect. Take a house point, Christopher. Thank well you very done. Much. All right. So this is what you need to do then to get things back on the straight and narrow. Okay. If you can go to the overhead for me, please, Christopher. All right. So here's my old bit that's broken. Okay. It's quite thin as we were quite thin at that point. Here's my new bit. That I'm just going to draft a little bit, but not too much. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay one in the other and just kind of wrap it round a bit. And what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're holding on to the old bit of yarn and the new bit here, okay? Remember Instagram. Oh, sorry. And the new bit here. Let's go like that way then. Okay. I tend to twist it round a bit as well, okay? And then if you come back to me, please. Bing! Then no way! Hopefully, fingers crossed, pride comes before a fall. But if you, the key to this is very simple. You've got to hold on to a bit of the old spun yarn with the new bit of wool tops, okay? Because if you're holding on to the old bit, then it's not gonna break again, in theory, all right? So always just parking, drafting, just that eek, don't pull too hard. It's really difficult to describe that. I hope my sound effect is helping you understand because it's a feeling. It's a feeling of when you're pulling. Don't. Feel the force. Yeah, but you don't want to force. You just want to kind of, rather than a, okay. It's another way of describing it. So then more spinning. Okay, just before it wants to spin back the other way, you grab it, all right? Well, that's what I do anyway. Probably have some die-hard spinner come and, and, and comment on here going, well, that's not the way to do it, actually. But anyway, that's, you know, everyone does it slightly do differently, don't they? And this is the way I do it. Uh, and I've had quite successful results. Let me show you some of those results. All right, so there's several... So there, there, is a, there is a question. Oh, go on then, before a, I show you the results. Another question. Go on another then. I'm question. just going to grab a slab of water um, so I'm really hot. From... Uh, who's it from? Oh, yes. Uh, Alice Close Knit mm -hmm. on uh, Instagram. And she says, so when you take it off the spindle. Yes. Uh, do you just wind it up into a ball? Yes. Just wind Let's it into a ball. Let's take some off, shall we? Right. This one here, look, on this spindle is Twinkly Teal Appeal. This one. I beg your pardon? Twinkly Teal Appeal. You know we give all of our wools a funny name. So this has got sort of peppermint and teal and gold Angelina sparkles. Hello, who wouldn't want that? Um, and you can buy a whole bag of that for 8 95 as I speak. In several years' time, if you're watching this, the price might have gone up. All right, so what, what I do, it's very basic what I do. I just have my spindle on the table. Someone's probably got a better way of doing this. And I just wind it into a ball. Okay, now... Hang on. If you are planning on plying your yarn and you want to keep the end of it, uh, you need to take both ends of it, basically, um, and ply them together. Look, that's all I'm doing. I'm just winding it into a ball. So you may need a ball winder, okay, which puts it into a proper ball as you're winding it, if you want to ply it or wind it around something. Because if you want to ply it, what you'll need is both ends. You'll, you'll, you'll need to attach this end and the other end to the top of your spindle and then you're twisting them together, all right? So that's how you're applying it. But yeah, that's what I do when I take it off the spindle. I literally roll it into a little ball, all right? Then I do just want to show you this. Um, it's a project in my book, I'll show you in a minute. So this, I had to patch it very sadly. It got a hole in it. I think something happened when we moved. Anyway, there was a great big gaping hole here when I pulled it out of the drawer. And um, I think, I don't know. Anyway, I've patched it up. So this was yarn that I span on a drop spindle. Is it span? 
or spun? spun. The past participle of spin is spun. But I think when I looked it up once, you can use span. I kind of feel like I want to say span. Anyway, I span this. Uh, this is actually spun from uh, Malabrigio newbie Arco Iris, which we are out of stock of. Nightmare COVID situation, can't get in at the moment. Hands, it's, it's made, it's died in Peru or something. Anyway, hopefully we'll have it back in stock soon. I actually patched it with glittery unicorn because it wasn't a million miles away. Um, yeah, so I hand spun this using a drop spindle and then I knitted it into a cushion front and then I used the wool tops, matching same wool tops to felt the back and then the pom-poms are also made of matching wool tops. So that's a project in this book as well. So this is easy stuff to make with fluff. There's the how to step by step. Oh, it's really bright. There's a few projects as well. Uh, that's just like weaving it in and out of plastic baskets that we sell. And then I made a lampshade just by literally stringing it around a drum wire lampshade and it's got little pom-poms on the bottom, uh, another basket. And then here is the cushion, which I stupidly called the Holy Trinity cushion, which in hindsight was probably a stupid name because it's, now it's got a big hole in it. Um, wah, 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 wah. Anyway, so that's that and what you can do with it once you've taken it off and um, wound it into a ball. Any other questions, Chris? Uh, currently, uh, uh, no. no. Okay. All right, so park and draft. Okay, that's what this method is called. If oh, you... Lynn, Lynn oh, concisely yeah. says, park, draft, pinch, spin, park. Got it. Well, there you are, Lynn. Perfect. Could have saved half an hour a little, there. A we? little mantra <laughs> from Lynn there. Park, draft, pinch, spin, park. Exactly. Pinch, spin. P D P S P. Yes. So just make sure that you're drafting out the wool consistently as well, because that's going to result in a consistent. Um, weight of yarn so I suppose I'm spinning sort of an Aran here I would say that's what I tend to do I tend to do like a double knit Aran chunky that's my vibe um, but you know you could make make it thicker like I said you could you could do the super chunky easily I mean that would be easier so to start with go go chunky to start with all right now when you get really proficient I'm sure you you'll find some other um, website videos where people leave this spinning and draft as it spins all right but that's something to work towards I think personally I just used park and draft as you may have gathered um and I I don't know I mean maybe it's not as fast but I find it manageable and controllable and I kind of like it and it's it sort of go you go into autopilot you know it's like riding a bike isn't it once you've got it once your brain has got it you go into autopilot and you can certainly watch and listen to something um, while you're doing it and it's quite relaxing it's quite meditative Meditative. I would say, is that a word? Ooh, I yeah, I, a word. I'm, I'm buying it. <laughs> and Betty looks quite meditative at the moment. She's like, so, so Debbie, Debbie on Facebook says, yeah. uh, could you use it to embellish when wet felting? Could you use it to embellish? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to, uh, in as much as you can with any yarn, any wool yarn. Or if you were using a yarn that wasn't wool when you're wet felting, you would have to trap it in. I would say that you would probably have to trap this in a little bit as well when you're wet felting. But if you left even it though, really loose. Even though it is uh, loose. wool. Because right. it's it's not it's never gonna be really loose as it's never oh. gonna be as, as loose as uh, the way that you should deal with the wool tops when you're wet felting. It's always going to be twisted up. So, um, you know, m m the thing I always go on about when, I, when we're wet felting is how loose and open you want the fibres to be. So if they're spun like this, I would say you probably do need a little bit of wool tops over the top of it when you're embellishing using yarn. But you can certainly trial and error. I mean, it really would have to be quite loose if you didn't want to use any, any sort of trapping wool top over the top. Okay. Um, any other questions then? Do you, does anyone want me to show them one more time how I draft this? Let's just do it one more time. So I'm spinning, parking under the old armpit. Then if you can go to the overhead for me, Chris, please. Make sure that your, your working wool top here isn't already sort of twisted in any way, okay? Decide 
So here's my spinning energy that I'm holding onto with this finger and thumb. Decide where you're gonna to go to here with this and then release it and you can see that energy go into here. It's like and magic. very important to hold it here tightly. Now come back to me please, Chris. And then adding more spin in, okay. And then unhooking and winding on. You see I tend to go down and up, down and up and you kind of want it to go in a bit of a cone shape. And it's really when that gets, gets full at the top there, then you'll wind it off. And you've got this groove here, which I always forget to use, to be honest, because I've got another one here without a groove. So um, it, you, you don't really necessarily need a groove. Um, and then of course, I'm coming to the end of my bit here, okay, that are my length that I was using. So now's the point at which I'm going to be thinking about joining on another one, all right? So to start with, let's just spin that bit there and I'll just go over the joining with you again as well all right I'm just going to go on a little bit further if you want to cut to the overheads there we go this is me just going at it a little bit faster okay and then I'm just going to go back to me and then I'm just going to wind that on like so and then let's just do that last bit on the overhead again and then we'll look at joining it. All right, oh, it's getting longer and longer. I don't need to join it for a while. <laughs> but eventually, very when I get value. there. Very yeah, good value, very good value. Yeah, very good value. Well, again, like I was saying, it depends how the, the thickness of the yarn that you want. But eventually, you're going to double these up. You're gonna pull them together and make sure you're holding on to both, okay? The old bit and the new bit when you're joining together. Okay, come back to me. And then as long as you're holding on to both, actually, I'm a bit far away here. I'm a bit far away. Let me just spin, uh, wind some on. Let's go to there. All right, yes. Okay, so now I'm joined. All right, it might, it's gonna just be a little bit fatter there. Um, and maybe, there we go. Yeah, it's just a little bit fatter. But I had gone a little bit thinner because I was trying to break it on purpose. <laughs> so um, I need to get back into my groove. I can still feel like this isn't the new bit yet, actually. So I'm just gonna carry on until it's completely the new bit. Now, Elaine, Elaine is break. struggling. Elaine is struggling. Yeah, so. did you know what? Don't worry about that because Ooh. everybody struggles when they first do this. And it really is just a question of practice and going super slow. But go on, tell me Elaine's struggle. Well, she, she's saying, I'm going to have to watch it several times. I just can't yeah. follow it. I've attached the wool top to the leader yarn, and yes. that's it. And my segue there was, yeah. if you give it a little while, yeah. Elaine, I will we'll have this up on YouTube for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can stop and go through it yeah. frame by frame. <laughs> yes. Um, so basically and turn the sound off so you don't have to listen to me <laughs> so when when we finish doing the live we do upload it as a, um, a done deal video to YouTube so that you can watch it over and over anyway um, all right so yeah just let's just do one final recap then so once you've attached your yarn using the lead yarn all you're doing is left hand holding it in the air make sure it's over your elbow like that and then right hand is spinning I go anti-clockwise as soon as it Thinks, as soon as you, you spin it, as soon as you think it's going back the other way, grab it, stick it under your armpit and swap hands. So I'm now taking my right hand to pinch where my left hand was holding, all right? And then I'm just going to draft out a little bit. Do you know what? If you're starting off, keep it quite thick. Let's not even worry about that. Let's make the super junky. And then just pinch it in a new place, a few more inches, a few inches further down and let the twist travel. Okay, hold it up in the air again, spin, just before it wants to go back the other way, stick it under your armpit, swap hands, pinch where your other finger and thumb is, okay, draft it out a little bit more, let's go super chunky here for, for who was it, Denise? Uh, Elaine. Elaine, sorry, uh, super chunky, let go, okay. I think, I think Twist. actually what she's struggling with Park. is is what she does with the lead yarn. So you showed, oh. you showed. You just stick it through the middle and twiddle it a bit and hold yeah. on to it and twist it. And but then you, you put it round the shaft and then you hooked it through the hook. Just bring so it up round the side, 
Just yeah. tie it. You can tie it on at the bottom uh, on the shaft. Yeah. Bring it round the side, and then just wind it round the hook, round the hook a couple so of times. So it's solid on the hook. Yeah, solid on the hook. But then you should have that little opening at the top, and you just stick your wool tops through the middle, twiddle it together a bit. Technical term. Okay. Hold on to both. Okay. And twirl, and then and then you should be off. Just off. try that a few times. You'll try be fine. It. Elaine, you'll get it. You will get it. Surprise. You'll get it, Elaine. You'll get I'm, it. I'm an but expert look, in this, and I got it. You're a what, sorry? Oh, no, that was somebody Shep, else. Perhaps we should get Chris live on air, having a little go at this, as he seems so very confident. What do we think? <laughs> <laughs> right, any other questions on the old drop spindle spinning? Uh, um, here's some glittery unicorn that I spun a while ago, actually, and isn't in a ball. It's in a messy mess. But it's so pretty, it's one of my favourites. There's a bit more of it on the bottom of this one below, the twinkly teal appeal. This one I've been using is uh, Angel's Delight. Now, when you have got it off into a ball, if you want to skein it up, you would use what's called a niddy noddy. N-I-D-D-Y, N-O-W-Y. Okay, I don't know where that expression comes from. That's a niddy noddy. It's a very, very small niddy noddy. <laughs> You've um, made that up. It's a very old term, Chris. I don't know. It's very. It's probably very historical, and there's probably a reason. And I haven't looked into it. You can Google it if ah, you want. Elaine is now yeah. saying, <laughs> "Where is your leader yarn now, though?" It's hidden underneath. It's the hidden within the new yarn that you've spun over the top of it. It's covered by the yarn on the shaft. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it doesn't matter if you can see a bit of it poking out of the bottom either. If you're finding that method hard, the way I used to do it, and actually the way I describe in my book, is that you do literally just tie a, a piece of any old yarn around the shaft, and you bring that any old yarn, could be this yarn, up here, and then you wrap your wool tops around it, a bit like I showed you how to join a break. You can do it like that as well. As long as you're holding on to this. Oh, dog made a funny noise. As long as you're holding on to this, um, leader yarn, okay, and you've got your new yarn around it. As long as you're holding on to both when you spin this, then it won't break and you'll be fine. Now, let me just talk to you about the niddy noddy. So, if you want to skein your yarn like this and set your twist, oh, I know, moving on, uh, this is one I've set the twist. So, I've skeined it up basically with the niddy noddy. Uh, there's a whole other section on YouTube about niddy noddies and how to use them, but you are just winding it round it like this and turning it into a skein. We won't go into that now. Um, but if you want to skein it up, you can sort of dunk that into some uh, lukewarm water, leave it for about 10 minutes, wring it out, leave it to dry, and that sets the twist. To be brutally honest with you, have I ever really done this? No, I haven't, of course. This is cut corners. I didn't do it with this yarn. I just wound it into a ball and knitted it. It's fine. You don't care, do I you? Just don't you care. just don't care. But if you are like you like to do things by the book and you want to set your twist, that's how you set your twist. You need to have it in a skein. Well, mind you, you could probably actually dunk your whole ball in the warm water and leave that to dry as well. I guess. Don't know. Have a go. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's what the professionals Look, maybe do. Maybe you shouldn't just suggest twist. doing that just in case it ruins everybody's hard work. Well, I think that if you did do that, you'd have to make sure you dried it thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to dry more thoroughly if you've got it in a skein. And then, of course, you can twist it into a pretty skein, mini skein. Most niddy noddies, I should just say, most niddy noddies are much bigger than this. And that's how people determine the length of yarn they've spun. They have a one yard or a two yard niddy noddy so that when it's wrapped round it and they know how many times it's wrapped round it, they know the length of the yarn they've spun. So clever. Anyway, there we go. Are there any more questions? I'm trying to yes. think, is there anything I haven't Yes, Lisa. Yes. Lisa on Facebook says, yes. could you ply it with a different yarn? Absolutely, Lisa. So you would um, spin this and then maybe you'd spin your glittery unicorn and you'd get the two ends going the opposite direction. Obviously tie them together. To, uh, around the, the shaft and then off you go in the other direction so you're spinning clock I'm doing anti-clockwise here so you'd spin clockwise and that would ply them together and actually it, it's a good way of practicing using the drop spindle without anything breaking it's almost easier than just spinning a yarn so um, 
have a go if you fancy doing that. Alice Close Knit on Instagram says, have you ever crocheted with your yarn? Yeah, yeah, crochet with it, knit it, yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's ready to go. Look, I literally wound that into a ball yesterday. It's ready to go. Just ready use it. Ready to go. Yeah? yeah? Just use it. Just it's get fine. on with it. Yeah. Alice, <laughs> just do it. Oh, dear. Um, so just to briefly run through options here. So South Pacific and Twinkly Teal Appeal and Glittery Unicorn are our house blends that have Angelina sparkles already sort of um, combed in through them, okay, which makes them so lovely. Uh, so I think Glittery Unicorn's 9 95 for 100 grams. I think these are 8 95 The South Pacific... I can't speak. The South Pacific... Um, has like a sort of iridescent one. Twinkly Teal Appeal has got gold. And this one's also iridescent, I think. But that one's blue and this one's yellow. Anyway, they're beautiful. Um, we are also doing a bundle deal where you can save money. I think it's under new on our website at the moment, not if you watch in five years' time, um, and where you can get a drop spindle, a copy of my book, Easy Stuff to Make with Fluff, and 100 grams of one of our house blends that don't have the Angelina sparkles. And those are Turquoise Treasure, Phantasmagorical, Angel's Delight, Fairy Floss Fantasia, and Red Hot Romantic. Okay, so you can choose one of those. Oh, and there's another one that I haven't got here. Ethereal Ether, which is lots of pastels. Beautiful. Really nice. And they come, if we can just reach it. They come in a 100 gram bag like that. So obviously that's going to spin you up 100 grams of yarn, depending on the thickness of it. We also sell, not in the bundle, but different, um, some, this is Shetland combed with uh, Tusa silk. Okay, so that's very nice. And we do a blue and a red, a green that have got silk in them as well. Then quite separate to the bundle, and we've always sold these. These are our um, spinning kits that we've always sold. Try not to the glare on the packet um, so this one actually has our house blend wool tops that's called a silkworm kissed my banana that's what I it's called beg your pardon. and that is a blend of Shet British Shetland British Swale Dale mulberry silk merino and banana fiber all blended together into one wool top I don't know if you can see it down there it's quite neutral but beautiful because it's got the silk running through it. So you get 50 grams of that and you get the drop spindle and you get the instructions. Is that what comes in here? Yes, that's that one. That's called uh, Give Us A Twirl 2. This one's Give Us A Twirl 1, which is the glittery unicorn. Okay, so that's got the Angelina running through it. So this is, uh, the glittery unicorn's actually got six different colours of merino in it. It's got the sparkly white Angelina fibres and it's also got a deep red mulberry silk blended in it. It's really beautiful, actually. It's my fave. Um, and that, you get 50 grams of that in there and the drop spindle and the instructions. And then behind, sitting on the shelf just here, is this one, which has got the South Pacific in it. Okay, so there are the, these kits in the packets have got the slightly fancier wool tops. And then we've got the bundle with the ones without the Angelina. I hope that's not too confusing. So many options. Okay, any more questions before I talk about our next live no, tutorial? Well, there is a quick one, but yeah, go on. you're going to have to be quick because we're nearly right yeah, out of yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, After gosh. plying, yes, do yes. you need to do anything to it to soak or yeah, something? Yeah, again, set the twist. I think you'd skein it, yeah, it and set, set the, the twist. twist. All right, so in two weeks' time, we're going to be back on Sunday the 30th of May. And there's been a lot of demand for this. So I'm going to do it, even though it's kind of the end of May, coming into summer, um, because we've just got our hat blocks back in stock. So I am actually going to do felt hats. This is a hat block, by the way, which is what we use for making a felt cloche hat, as you can see. That is then sitting over there. I'm not going to try this one on because I know it's too small for my mammoth head. I've got a really big head. Uh, it's not full of brains. I think it's just mostly actually covered in hair. Hair, mainly hair. <laughs> um, but I will now pop this one on for you because I know this one fits me. I'm not quite sure if it goes... Well, I suppose it does go with my outfit. I think All it right. goes very well. So the thing with the felt hats, there's a few different options. 
that you can make them from sort of several different shapes. Some are rounded, some are square at the top. I've probably messed my hair up now. Some are square at the top uh, and tied together at the top like this. Some are start off life looking like a strange wizard's hat and then get loads of folds in them so you can be like arty and, you know, architectural with your felt hat. That's Where's it. the felted hat of mirth? Oh, that's at home. Oh. So, yes, Chris has a felted hat of mirth at home that I made him that, well, perhaps we'll make him wear it in a couple of weeks' time, which he has to wear when he's in a bad mood. Uh, but it's also very or handy camping. for camping because... If you're camping on a campsite, I don't know if that's allowed at the moment, is it? I think it might be. Um, perfect. A, for keeping warm. B, for rolling down over your ears so you can't hear next 10 zipping and unzipping. Zip, zip. Um, and actually, also, you can put it over your eyes as well when it gets light in the morning. Maybe you ought um, to make a specific so camping kind hat. Kind of like this for a camping hat. We've only ever um, used it once. For yeah, that we purpose. don't go camping. We're not campers. No, um, not campers. Actually, I detest and loathe camping. So we don't do that. But I can recommend it if you're a camper. Uh, you need a felt hat. Anyway, so I'm going to show you how to make one of those. Uh, people do actually just wear them normally out when it's cold as well. I'm going to show you how to make one of those in two weeks' time, Sunday the 30th of May at 11 o'clock, live here on YouTube. Oh, like and subscribe, please, will you? if that's okay, if you don't mind, if you do actually like it and you would like to subscribe. <laughs> I'm just so polite. Um, and that's it. I think we're there. Okay. Aren't we? Elaine, Elaine's given up. Oh, no, don't give up, is, Elaine. No, don't give up, Elaine. Don't give, don't don't give up. Give Maybe up. put it down, have a cup of tea, have some chocolate, do a Watch few it on deep YouTube yogic again. breaths and yeah. try again later. All right. Thank you so, so much for tuning in, everybody, and for all your support and your online orders and everything. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And we will see you again soon. Cheery bye. It's chilly and